So thank you. Thank you for having me on OWASP's uh, 20th anniversary event. Uh, I'll be speaking about VAPI, which is a vulnerable adversely programmed interface. It is kind of a lab that uh, mimics or demonstrates uh, OWASP API adopting vulnerabilities as a part of uh, like an exercise. So people get familiar with uh, the categorization of API vulnerabilities. And uh, development and implementation of APIs uh, has been like increasingly, uh, increasing numerously on a day-to-day -day basis. And like uh, be it through custom routes or uh, default uh, routes that come as a part of framework that you're using uh, for your project or product. And API do act as a business logic and catalyst to implementation of uh, features to the application. However, uh, uh, a poorly configured interface may like uh, drag down the entire security posture of the organization. And this often leads to data breaches. And in 2021, we can say that we are comfortable enough uh, to consider APIs as a separate entity in the security processes uh, that we do, uh, like a vulnerability assessment or like a DevSecOps process. So uh, VAPI is a small attempt at spreading awareness about API security. So yeah, let's get started. So uh, we, we'll be looking at what exactly is VAPI, uh, how do we install it, uh, the OWASP API top 10 project uh, on which it is based, uh, then vulnerabilities in web applications versus vulnerabilities in APIs. Uh, we're going, we are going, going to be looking at a quick demo on the VAPI, and we will also see the contributors to this project. So a uh, little bit about me. Uh, I am Tushar Kulkarni. I work as a security developer at Home Security. Uh, I work as a part of team which ensures uh, customers' uh, vulnerability management and assessment. Uh, I also lead the OWASP Nagpur chapter. We have uh, application security meets uh, on alternate months. So we try to bring, bring speakers to the chapter from around the globe, speak on latest and cool research, whatever uh, they uh, have done uh, and apart from maintaining VAPI uh, as a part of my GitHub project, I also try to put other stuff on GitHub uh, like small snippets or tools. So you can also check my GitHub. Uh, I'll, I'll mention the handle at the end of the presentation. And I also like to play CTFs and do bug bounties in my free time. That's about me. And yeah, so VAPI, uh, the name vulnerable adversely programmed interface uh, why it is not a vulnerable application programming interfaces the earlier version of vapi used a lamp stack uh, let's say a php mysql and we the the roadmap is that we are trying to implement it as a good api but the name still remains the vapi because uh, it is an adversely programmed interface and it, it mostly is based on uh, PHP and MySQL stack uh, and the OWASP API top 10 project, uh, which lists out the top 10 vulnerabilities that occur in APIs. So if you are a security engineer, uh, you may get, uh, you'll get acclimatized with the categorization of API vulnerabilities. And you will also get to learn the very basic vulnerabilities that might occur in uh, REST API. So VAPI is a, REST API, not like uh, a soap service or uh, something like that. And if you are a developer, you get to have a look at the vulnerable code. Uh, so you can have a look at how, how this code is vulnerable because it, the VAPI itself is a vulnerable code, right? And you also get to uh, made to think of possible ways to mitigate the issues. So once you look at the issues, you, you are made to think about it, right? Uh, like how I can fix this issue. So uh, it, it benefits both, uh, let's say, security engineers as well as developer. Uh, and yeah, like other enthusiasts can also benefit from it. Installation, we have two, uh, two techniques, uh, like uh, the whole project is dockerized. So you can either go like in a Docker way or like install it manually. Uh, if you have a Docker and Docker Compose binaries in your system, you can just go just uh, do the git clone project, go to the root of the project uh, project and run a daemon process like docker compose fd 
and that will just shoot up the containers and you'll be able to access the VAPI interface in your browser on port 8. Other than that, uh, you can always uh, install it or use it or launch the service manually. Again, you can clone the project, uh, but this, this prerequisites include PHP and MySQL. So a PHP binary has to be there and a MySQL service has to be there. You have to import the database that is provided in the project into the MySQL, uh, uh, what do you say, My, MySQL service. And you can configure the credentials accordingly into the .env file, uh, which is a part of a Laravel project. So we are trying to migrate the project from PHP MySQL stack to uh, like a good Laravel interface which follows uh, good API practices. And then after everything is configured, you can go to the Laravel home that should be VAPI slash VAPI. And you can just run the command PHP RT sensor. This will launch the Laravel server, and you should be able to access the, uh, the, the VAPI or the, the interface as well. And this just launches the API, but in order to like, see uh, what API calls do you get or what endpoints are available to you, you can always uh, go to the documentation. So there's always a, a documentation available. Uh, so whichever is your host, uh, the slash V API part will give you the documentation of all the available API calls. And like I said, it is divided into 10 exercises, starting from one to 10. So accordingly, you can get your API calls. Uh, for testing uh, this uh, in this environment, uh, you can always use uh, something like Postman. So we currently provide a Postman collection and environment, which uh, in which you can set uh, the environment variable for your host. So you don't have to really go into each request and paste your host there uh, if if it changes. The the environment also. Uh, tries to maintain the other environment variables such as authentication keys that are automatically generated on your login requests. So currently it's, it supports Postman collection and environment. That is what we are providing. And soon we will be like migrating to open API documentation. So, and, and like contributions are always welcome. You can always visit the VAPI uh, GitHub link and try to contribute maybe. Uh, you can also use MITM proxies like OWASP or uh, Burpsuit, which will help you conduct advanced attacks, such as let's say uh, you want to check for credential stuffing or vulnerabilities like that. So at times, intruder uh, uh, tools like intruder or uh, you know some OWASP functionality can help you do that attack. So it not it it is not entirely necessary, but it may help you in some of the uh, you know launching some of the attacks on that API. Uh, coming to OWASP API top 10 project, uh, it, it, uh, it is uh, again an OWASP project and uh, it was uh, the first version came out in 2019. And the, the entire project is based on uh, OWASP API top 10, I would say, uh, because it follows us uh, examples from this project only. So a big shout out to this project, uh, OWASP API top 10. You can see uh, a lot of uh, injection is uh, not at the top, uh, like as compared to web applications. So that's the difference. Uh, and there are other vulnerabilities like broken object level authorization or function level authorization. And you, you will get to see these kind of vulnerabilities in the VAPI lab. Now coming to vulner vulnerabilities in web applications versus vulnerabilities in APIs. So uh, we have not seen cross-site scripting being a part of APIs at a large scale, I would say. Uh, let's say the content type uh, is strictly managed or uh, the content type is properly managed unless there is a way to sniff or manipulate the content type. APIs are, uh, I would say, I mean, we, we don't get to see cross-site scripting attacks on APIs. Or unless the, the content is consumed by a front-end and it is not sanitizing the whatever data is coming in. But at the API endpoint result, 
we don't get to see cross site scripting much but on the other hand we get to see a lot of broken authorization and access control so uh, uh, let's say a misconfigured jwt token or uh, an an idor an insecure direct object reference so these kind of vulnerabilities occur in api a lot so i would say uh, broken access control is something that i try to look for a lot in apis and they do these kind of vulnerabilities they do occur a lot in apis again uh, a dynamic assessment on web application would give you a different result i mean uh, not different i would say but a good summary of results as compared to web apis because testing web uh, apis uh, requires a lot of context and uh, business logic and roles or tools are available uh, so uh, i think uh, uh, the the dask engine is hardly like able to comprehend these kind of factors when considering the scan so that's how it uh, kind of differs and we are like we consider api testing or api is to be a separate entity in the security process and api security is a new pool i would say uh, because of its platform independence uh, so uh, uh like you can use apis and just integrate into any application it can be a mobile application a desktop or even a web application so that is something uh, that uh, that makes it a platform independent uh, uh, you know interface i would say and yeah uh, it all uh, the apis are also like the core part of business logic uh, so whatever uh, features or implementations that you are doing as a part of your product mostly relies on the apis that you are uh, that 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 the front end is consuming so yes and uh apis are like also uh, part of a uh, major part of modern web application so we have seen we come from uh, you know traditional web application back in the days where uh, dynamic pages used to load or refresh uh, load new data on a refresh rather than you know so now we see what we see is uh, uh, pages making a synchronous calls to apis and updating the dynamic data on the fly so that is something that is cool and we have come a long way so yeah and again automation is uh, like uh, heavily followed these days i would say and apis play a crucial role in that so that makes uh, uh, not just api but api security to be you know something to get familiar with uh the project roadmap includes laravel migration as i said before we are still in the progress of uh, migrating the whole project to laravel uh this includes following you know good api practices and then uh, we'll be trying to add more challenges currently we are focusing on like migrating only the available 10 challenges to the laravel project uh, later on we will be adding uh, more challenges i would say then we are also working on acknowledge acknowledgement for completion of challenges something like a dashboard which will give you a sense of accomplishment that you have uh, yes you have completed this much and now you know about uh, these vulnerabilities so uh, it's not like a hard lab i would say it just uh, makes you get familiarized with uh, api vulnerabilities so it is like a ctf but it's not that hard i would say but if you are a beginner i think you should definitely try, uh, try this and uh, this is like a long term uh, milestone that i am looking at uh, that the api being a totally cloud source playground for api security challenges so uh, people can maybe contribute and then push it to the project so this will help uh, the whole community to you know uh, spread awareness about api security uh let's have a look at uh, a quick demo uh, maybe we will look at one challenge i will let's set this just a second so
So this is one of my instances. Uh, we can see that uh, there is no Docker process running. We can go to the API directory. We can just load, start our service uh, using the command. So it has created a DB service uh, in a part. Apache and a PHP MyAdmin. PHP MyAdmin is not I mean, that necessary. It's just for de debugging process. But again, you can always use it. And we can also launch our Postman in which the, the collection will be imported. Any issues with the show? No. Hello? Are you able to see my screen? It, it's minimized. Uh, just a second. Can you see now? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. If, if I no issues. Not. Yeah. So uh, this is my server that is running the VAPI interface. Uh, you can see there are three services that are running and I have added the domain name to my VAPI environment, you can see. Okay, so the first, uh, the first challenge or the first exercise focuses on broken object level authorization. So it has like a, a user endpoint uh, and a post request which creates a user. So I can just say like something like, uh, username would be would be Tushar. and let's say I want to sign up for a course on AppSec 101. And okay, anyway, uh, the API calls uh, uh, will always show you the password and a clear task, text or the MITM tools as well. So let's just keep something like a dummy password. Let's try to send the request. Okay, my proxy is on, so we need to turn it off. Let's try that again. Okay, it says duplicate entity. Let's try and change the user. Yeah, we got our user, uh, which is root task two, and our ID is seven. So once that is done, you can see the environment, it has updated the API one auth. That is a basic authentication token that we will use in the next call, which is a get user. So what get user does is it gets the user details uh, by providing uh, the user ID. So let's just say our, our user ID was seven and we got, uh, we would like to get the details that we stored into the data. So yeah, we got our details, uh, the username, name, and course that we have signed up for. Now, uh, you can see in the environment that the API one ID is set to seven. And that's how basically API calls happen, right? right. We provide an ID uh, as a parameter and uh, that's where broken object level authorization comes. Let's try to provide maybe six instead of seven and see if we get any other users data. Okay, that's strange. Let's try five. Yeah, so we are able to get another users data. That is me again. So let's just try with four maybe. Yeah, and we can try again with one because it can be like, and yeah, so we are able to get other users data and that's that's where our flag is. So uh, this was just a short demo of broken object level authorization. Uh, and yeah, so these are uh, another exercises that I would suggest uh, you can have a look uh, at by yourselves. But that's the whole idea around uh, VAPI. You can also use uh, suit as your companion for intercepting the requests. Uh, for certain uh, 
challenges or categories i would say there are some resources provided as a part uh, in the resources folder so some challenges are like uh, embedded into let's say a mobile application or uh, you know uh, something some hint is provided so you can always refer to the resources folder or the documentation again yeah so let me show you the documentation so so sorry. So this is how uh, the documentation looks like uh, when you visit uh, the host on which the VAPI interface is hosted and the documentation just tells you like, or gives you a description, like right? you can register yourself as a user and that's it, or is there something else? So uh, I would say a, a description for each category is given, which you can refer or uh, for which you can get a hint. So this is something that you can look at as well. and. Yeah, uh, that's that's the demo or the one one challenge that I wanted to show. Uh, feel free to you know check out the rest of the challenges. Uh, and I would like to thank uh, contributors of this project, uh, Chaitanya, Paulo, Mohit, who have uh, contributed a lot to this project. Uh, Chaitanya helped helped me with uh, you know mobile application. I would also like to thank uh, apisecurity.io for uh, publishing this tool as part of their uh, API security newsletter, which helped this project reach to a lot of number. And again, uh, there are other uh, projects or repositories like Mind API, OWASP Vulnerable Web Applications Directory, uh, Awesome API Security. A shout out to these as well uh, for in considering uh, including VAPI as a part of. Uh, you know, useful resource uh, for learning API security. So thanks to these guys. Uh, these are some of the references that you can check. And thank you. Thank you all uh, for having me. I'm open to questions. If you have, have any, you can also join this Slack channel and uh, shoot any questions.